I talked about when I was talking about the Capitol riots, I talked about the point of not just who was there, but also more importantly, who wasn't there. And I talked specifically about one individual that to me was suspiciously absent from this thing because normally he's at all of these events. Anytime there's been any Trump event anywhere since the inauguration in 2016 or 2017, he was there, right? And that's Alex Jones. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Turns out Alex Jones was, in fact, there. And I was shocked to find this out because, you know, normally the, the mainstream media is ready to hang this guy out for anything. And the way that they went after everybody else who was had anything to do with this thing, arresting people after the fact, feds going and, and raiding people's houses and going grabbing people out of their homes a week after the fact, that people are still getting grabbed right now this week. But all of a sudden, Alex Jones, who's been public enemy, enemy number one virtually for the past few years with the Sandy Hook stuff and, and the, the banning of him from all social media sites and all that stuff. All of a sudden, his participation in this was largely, well, I, with the exception of really the only stuff I found, there's a few American media, the American media is pretty much all gone to sleep. The, the mainstream, the media over in the UK, like the London Guardian, did a piece. There are, there are a few things here I found, but they've been, they were, uh, I think they were mirrored from British newspaper, but this is, this is crazy. This is crazy. Alex Jones claims he paid for the rally that preceded the Capitol riot. Austin-based conspiracy theorist Alex Jones claims his company paid for the rally that preceded the riots at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Jones explained his role in a video posted a day after the unprecedented violence at the Capitol when a pro-Trump mob stormed the building to disrupt proceedings to formalize the presidential election results. The riot led to evacua evacuation of lawmakers, more than 50 arrests and five deaths. Supporters had gathered nearby for two days of Trump rallies before a march to the Capitol turned into a riot. Multiple photos from the day show Jones, the founder of right-wing media, media group InfoWars, addressing crowds of Trump supporters on a bullhorn or, or sta standing in a crowd. He also spoke at a Trump rally on Freedom Plaza on January 5th. In the January 7th video filmed in Washington, D.C., Jones claimed he was asked by the White House to lead the march to the Capitol three days prior to the event. <clears throat> He's claimed this is now, this is the interesting part that they left out. He claims that the secret service actually asked him. So, so let's be clear here. What we're talking about here is two separate events. This is where it gets really interesting. So there was, there was a rally that happened, I guess, what they call the Capitol Ellipse. Okay, so before the, the riot took place, there was a rally that happened there. And Jones claims that he rented out the Ellipse and paid $500,000. His, this is, this is where he gets, so his words are that his pre-riot rally, which he was at, had absolutely zero nothing to do with the riot that ensued because the riot that ensued and all that stuff and all the ensuing chaos bullshit was done by Antifa. This is according to Jones. <laughs> I mean, my God, folks, if this thing didn't already stink to high heaven before, I thought it stunk to high heaven because Jones was suspiciously absent. Now that we know he was there, it stinks even fucking more. In the video, Jones said the Secret Service would pull him out of the front row during the president's speech about 30 minutes before it ended so he could go to the place where he would start the march. Jones said that he ultimately did not end up leading the march 
because there was already a crowd ahead of him. So that's his story. So his story is the secret service. This is insane. The secret fucking service asked Jones to lead the march on the Capitol. And his story is that before he could do that, there was all these other people, hundreds of thousands of people already in front of him. And they were all Antifa and, and BLM and everything else. So he was unable to do what the Secret Service wanted him to do. Jones also said he paid close to $500,000 to book the ellipse, the park where President Donald Trump's supporters initially gathered, and other areas near the Capitol. He said 80% of the money came from an unnamed donor. Now, which, okay, so, so which one is it? Because um, he first claims he paid for it out of his own pocket. Then he claims 80% of it came from an unnamed donor. Well, who's an unnamed donor? Probably somebody Russian. Somebody with a fucking Russian last name. Somebody with, I mean, give me a break. So you're not going to tell us who this unnamed donor was? But you first claim it was $500,000. So 80% of that $500,000 came from an unnamed, again, this is all shady. And again, we know who we already had there on, on hand. I talked about Pat Militich, the ex UFC guy being there, who's a Freemason. I've already covered Jones's <clears throat> connections in his family. <clears throat> Excuse me. Connections with Freemasonry in my film, The Secret Right Volume 2. Back in the, That came out in 2011, by the way. That's a 10-year-old film. That's how long I've been exposing this, in case you're new to my work. Then we had... <clears throat> Army psychological warfare officers there. I, again, in that same film, I exposed Jones's connections to military psychological warfare. I talked about Michael Aquino. My, I talked about that the other day. Michael Aquino used to head up the Army psychological warfare office where one of their agents was there at the Capitol riot. And don't forget, he's the guy that term that coined the term InfoWars in his Mind War documents, which, like I said the other day, you can now get on Amazon. By the time I got out there in 20 minutes, 30 minutes before Trump finished his speech, there was already hundreds of thousands of people ahead of me marching, and before Trump ever took the stage, Antifa dressed up over 100 of them as patriots was there. He said, falsely claiming that Evidence that Antifa followers disguised as patriots were also in the crowd. The baseless theory has been suggested by some of Trump supporters. You know what? You know what's interesting. You know what? I I, I don't know if I have the story. But I found out that the uh, the original reports of that of Antifa being of being involved in this came from Russian state media. They came from Russia Today, who I have exposed and talked about ten times over. There was, uh, that's another, that's, that's another thing I've got to talk about with you tonight. There was, that's come to, to my attention because, uh, there was definite Russian involvement in this. Jones said the crowd wanted a 10 day emergency investigation into votes in battleground states and was supposed to gather on the side, the other side of the Capitol. He said when he got to the Capitol, he saw smoke bombs, tear gas, and people climbing walls and told people to stop so the events didn't end the debate over the investigation. Right. Oh, my God. See what I'm saying? This is, even, this is even fucking stinkier than it was before. So Jones was there, but he's claiming that, the, what, that none of the people that were there for his thing had anything to do with what was going on bullshit and they're hanging up everybody else that's there but all of a sudden jones is off scot-free when the when the media's been they've been out to hang this guy he's been public enemy number one they've been out to get him for every that's what i why i told you when all that stuff was happening with jones that just like his ascent was controlled that his dis descent would be controlled ladies and gentlemen i told you that 10 years ago that Jones would have a controlled ascent and the ascent of him and his popularity would also follow with a descent that would be just as equally controlled. And I told you that when all of that stuff was going on with the trials and the Sandy Hook stuff, that's what that was. 
everybody else, li- listen, if you need, I mean, we don't have to even prove this. I mean, Jones admits it himself now. He used to deny it, but shit, he even admits now he, you know, family members, uncle in the CIA and stuff. I mean, that's when I first started exposing him, he was denying all that stuff. Now he doesn't, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't even fucking deny it anymore. So we know Jones is, is, is a government inside agent. I mean, people used to say that was a conspiracy theory. It's not anymore. The guy's work has been always working for the government. The guy is an agent. Alex Jones is a fucking agent. Don't get it twisted. That's the only, why do you think he's walking scot free from this thing? Because like I said before, that's why I thought he wasn't there initially because they were trying, probably trying to protect some of their alt-right agents and some of the guys that they're going to need in, uh, as you know, these controlled gatekeepers in the media that they're going to need over the next four years. Now that we've got the Democrats back in, but not only was Jones there, he's going out of his way to try to claim that the people that were involved in the riots weren't involved in his event. Now here's, where it gets really interesting. There's a clip of Jones with his bullhorn at the event preceding the riots. This is before, now remember, this is before the riots started taking place, right? This is before there was anything going on. This is before what was supposed to take place, what Jones claimed was supposed to take place, which was after this rally, the Secret Service was going to pull him out of the crowd after Donald Trump's speech, pull him to the front. He was going to lead the march of the people that were at the rally to the White House. But according to him, he couldn't because there was always hundreds of thousands of people all in front of him, and those people were Antifa, and those people were the people that caused all the stuff, right? There's a clip here. This is, <laughs> oh man, this to me seals the deal, ladies and gentlemen. There's a clip here of Jones saying, we're not Antifa. We're not BLM. Let's march around to the other side. He's got, this is, this is before the shit started going down. This is before the riots started taking place. Okay. Before anything was going on. And Jones preemptively, before any of this stuff was going on, has the bullhorns and he's saying to people, we're not Antifa. We're not BLM. Let's march around to the other side. Preemptively announcing on the bullhorn to the crowds, we're not in. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? Jones had foreknowledge this thing was going down. Again, this is how we know. We already knew. We already established it. In in the previous show and previous video and all that stuff, uh, we already established it. Clearly, this was a government military black operation. But what makes, what seals the deal even more? Jones, this video proves Jones had foreknowledge of this. Jones knew what was going to happen. And how did he know? Probably because the same Secret Service guys that were going to pull him out of the crowd and have him lead the march told him what was going to happen. Why would he preemptively, ladies and gentlemen, get on the bullhorn before any of the Capitol rioting, any of the stuff's going down, while the protest is still peaceful and the event is still peaceful? Why would he get on the bullhorn, folks, and preemptively say to the crowd, we're not Antifa, we're not BLM, let's march around to the other side. He's preemptively saying that so that the people that were there that knew this was going to happen would know not to mess with him and the people that were behind him because they already had the other people, the staged act, you know, probably stage actors and crisis actors and all that stuff in place. And then he comes back and says, Oh no, well I didn't get to go up there because there was already all the hundred thousand people in front of me. And so those people were Antifa. You're busted Jones. You're busted fucking cold blooded in fucking broad daylight yet again, motherfucker. We got your ass. Why would he preemptively, ladies and gentlemen, be screaming on a bullhorn, we're not Antifa, we're not BLM? Well, nobody's suggesting you are. At this point, again, no one had suggested 
that there were BLM or, or Antifa people even there. That didn't come out until after all the stuff started happening. Because remember, at first, when the stuff first started happening, even Trump and Ivanka put out tweets, which you can go look up, which they later deleted. But even they put out tweets that said, you know, we're, we're praising the patriots at the Capitol and then came back and erased those once the, the shit started going down. See if I can play any of this. So there you go. There it is. <coughs> There's Jones. Let's he notice how he also said, let's not fight the police. Well, nobody was planning on fighting the police. At, at this point, if you watch this clip, the, the sun is still out. At this point, nothing had started going down. At this point, everything was peaceful. This was just the rally. Nobody knew, uh, uh, allegedly, the story is, nobody knew there was going to be anything going down, right? Why is Jones preemptively on the bullhorn saying, we're not Antifa, we're not BLM, let's not fight the the police? There weren't any, any fighting of the police going on yet at that point. Jones knew what was coming. He knew what was going down. Alex Jones said, we're not Antifa, we're not BM, you're amazing, I love you, let's march around the other side, let's not fight the police and give the system what they want. We are peaceful and we won this election, and as much as I love seeing the Trump flags flying over this, we need to not have the confrontation with the police. They're going to make that the story. I'm going to march to the other side where we have a stage where we can speak and occupy peacefully. There's another video doing the rounds of the internet where Alex Jones can be seen having a go at a QAnon follower who happened to call his show, when the caller says why he keeps interrupting him, Alex Jones says, because you're lying, because you're full of shit. The famed conspiracy theorist thing goes off saying that none of Q's claims ever came true. The whole episode marks an occasion where the InfoWars conspiracy theorist comes across as far more sensible and reasonable than peak rational atheists who have succumbed to the Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, again, all of a sudden he's changing his tune. Listen, this was the fucking plan. This was the fucking plan. And all of a sudden, he's separating himself from, Q, from QAnon all of a sudden, too. Man, I told you, they wanted to keep... That's why, again, this is why I initially thought Jones wasn't there, why they didn't have him there, because they wanted to keep him intact and keep his operative status intact and not have him brought down with the rest of these guys that were there because they're going to need him as an operative over the next four years. He was there, but he was also preemptively and on video, by the way. Notice he had they had plenty of video capturing Jones saying, hey, but, you know, this is before anything has gone down, folks. This is where anything's happened. Jones is up there on the bullhorn saying, hey, listen, you know, if anything, hey, I'm not saying anything's going to happen here. You know, I'm not saying there's going to be riots or you know, I'm not saying we're, anybody's going to go after the police, but, you know, hey, in case anybody does, I just want to preemptively put it on the record and say we're not Antifa, we're not BLM, we're just here for a peaceful thing, and then boom. Oh, I didn't get to go down there, folks, because uh, there was already too many people there, and those are the people that, that well, the storm cap, those are Antifa people. They weren't, not, those people weren't with us, folks. Holy fucking shit, guys. I told you, the fucking plot thickens.
Russian involvement in the Capitol building attack. Russian military intelligence linked militant groups may have participated in the violent siege of the U.S. Capitol building during a riot organized by Donald Trump supporters. The analysis of photos and videos from open sources shows that Russian military intelligence previously may be involved in a large-scale cyber attack on U.S. federal agencies intervened in the recent events in Washington, D.C. So there's a good chance that those guys we saw using the Punisher logos that were all covered up, there's a good chance those guys may have been Russian special forces. The tactics used while storming the Capitol building reminds one of the methods that the Russians had worked out during the protests of the Yellow Vest movement in France and Catalonia independence supporters. Here, the infiltration of their militants into the riot crowd were used to fuel and escal escalate the protest, and as a result, to help the protesters invade infrastructure and federal objects. In addition, the mob's actions in the capital itself remind one of the tactics used by the Russian special forces while seizing the parliament building in Crimea, Ukraine, and government agencies in eastern Ukraine in 2014. The, the Kremlin uses protests and popular riots to perform camouflage actions of influence abroad as achieved by infiltrating Russian intelligence officers who form the militant wing inside the protest movement, engage in agitation, introduce conspiracy theories, and recruit influential members of the movements. Similarly, in 2016, under the guise of local nationalists, the main intelligence <coughs> directorate attack groups participated in a coup attempt in Montenegro. In 2020, Judge Joaquin Aguiar from Barcelona, who was investigating the illegal financing of the 2017 Catalan independence referendum, stated that shortly before the referendum, Russia had offered to send 10,000 soldiers to Catalonia and pay the Catalan debt. The judge's conclusion was based on two recorded telephone conversations of the Catalan politician Victor Terradellis, an associate of the former Catalan president uh, Carlos Puget de Mont made in May 2018. We doubt the Kremlin's ability to mobilize and transfer such a big number of militants to European countries. However, the sheer fact that this issue was discussed may show Russia's potential to infiltrate militants into protests at the national level and abroad. In one of the videos capturing the Congress building siege, one could clearly hear shouts in Russian. Smalay, smalay, be brave, be brave. It may prove the fact that the Russian militants performed the organizational function to make the protesters move more active. So you had guys, so yeah, I'd heard that. And I'd heard that people were trying to downplay that or debunk that or something. But I'd heard that there were, there were people were heard speaking in Russian while at the riot, while it was going on. Russia's involvement in the United States protests and the siege of the Capitol being seen as an act of terrorism may be similar to the 9-11 attacks. Yeah, I've talked about that. Therefore, recognizing Russia as a terrorism-sponsoring country, imposing tougher sanctions against the Russian economy, blah, blah, blah. And it, now it's also come out that apparently... Oh, where did it go? Give me a second here, guys. There it is. Woman who took a laptop from Pelosi's office in Capitol Riot planned to sell it to Russian spies. A woman identified as having taken part in the storming of U.S. Capitol is accused of stealing a laptop belonging to top Democrat Nancy Pelosi, which she hoped to sell to a Russian spy agency, according to the FBI. There is no indication that Riley June Williams, a 22-year-old care worker from Pennsylvania, took a laptop from Mrs. Pelosi's office. The FBI, which is working off of a tip, said in the court record the matter remains under investigation. 